Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Eldridge. I'm your town manager here in Berwick. I hope everybody's doing well and, and getting through this COVID-19. Uh, it's really thrown a wrench into just about everybody. Uh, I just wanted to speak briefly on that um, because some of you, some people have called, but some haven't been aware until they show up that the town office has been closed since Monday. Uh, we had an incident uh, last week. One of our staff people was exposed uh, to someone who didn't know they had COVID-19 until two days afterwards. So we took all precautions and uh, we don't want uh, anybody in the staff being exposed and we don't want the public to be exposed. Um, so we decided to wait and, and close it this week until that staff person is able to get tested, which they have. And uh, the 48 hours uh, waiting is up today. So we're hoping to hear from them to find out um, if uh, they tested positive or not. We are doubtful because there's been other people who were exposed, unwilling, unknowing, and they have had tests done and they have turned out negative as well. So we're got our fingers crossed, but most everybody at the town office who was working with that person for the rest of the last week um, has been uh, isolating themselves from the, the uh, friends and family and whoever else they need to stay away from. So uh, we are hopeful that we will open on Monday uh, and get back to normal. And speaking of that, um, we will be closed on Tuesday. It is the year end for us, the fiscal year. Um, and it requires uh, all the staff uh, that's in the building to, to get their books in order so we can close out the year and then input the new budget um, probably after we get, it gets voted on, but not uh, right away. Um, so hopefully uh, after uh, July 14th, we'll know what we have for budget uh, numbers and those will be put into the system and we'll be back uh, to working normal. Um, Talking about that, our schedules, uh, opening a town office has been somewhat off and on, different hours and different days. Um, and our hope that on July 6th, I think it is, on Monday, our regular office hours will go back. And I'm going to just tell you briefly, and you'll see it posted on, on BCTV and on our webpage. Uh, it'll be Monday, 8 to 4 in the afternoon, Tuesday, 8 to 6. So we're going to be open a couple hours longer for those of you who are getting out of work and need to do town business. And then Wednesday, 8 to 4, Thursday, 8 to 4, and then Fridays will be open 8 to uh, 1230. Um, and the staff will be here till 1.30 to close out their drawers and, and get their paperwork taken care of. So again, look for the hours being changed up uh, on the web page, on BCTV, and also um, it'll be on the door when you first come in. Um, and we're hoping that, that uh, things are heading in a positive direction, even though there seems to be more COVID-19 exposures, but we're taking all precautions still, and we're going to maintain the requirement to wear a face mask. Uh, I know it's a pain, believe me, I can't stand going into any place with it, but I do because I don't want to be the person that exposes somebody if I happen to have it. Um, and I hope that everybody will respect that uh, for everybody. So, because uh, sometimes you know and sometimes you don't. So, uh, we'll still require the social distancing uh, six feet. And as, if you've been in the town office, you'll see the marks. And uh, just be patient, which Everybody that has been in the office has been very patient and understanding. So we're doing our best to get it processed, uh, everybody processed in a uh, uh, respectable time. Um, transfer station, just to give you an update, uh, uh, that uh, falls on a holiday, July 4th, which is, uh, uh, what day is that? I can't even remember. Saturday. So, um, Expect that it's going to be closed. Uh, they get vacation time at the off, so plan accordingly. Um, on other things, town voting, July 14th. If you haven't got your absentee ballots and you don't want to get, be around people, that's the way to do it. Uh, come on in the office and get one, or you can go on the uh, state Secretary of State's website and ask and fill out the form. I did that. 
um, and it's really quite simple. And it comes in your mail, and then you can fill it out at home and bring it in. Um, so we hope we get a good turnout. We've had an awful lot of people at requesting uh, absentee ballots, so it look, looks like we're going to have a little bit more than we normally do. Usually it's only around 250 people that turn out uh, for this, but you'll be voting on the budget and a few other things, the town budget, the school budget, and there'll be some state uh, and federal stuff there. Um, public library, the board approved the uh, memorandum of understanding last night. The um, Berwick Library Association and I had sat down over the last six months and worked on uh, language for something that we all could agree to uh, and legal could agree to. So uh, we voted on that last night. Uh, so the town will be uh, taking care of that uh, part of, of our uh, new area in our budget, but we'll be funding it at 100%. Uh, the town uh, will not own the building, but we will keep up our general maintenance. Um, and all the employees that work there will be uh, employees of the town. So they'll get all the uh, benefits that come with that, which is a good thing. But they're going to be increasing their hours and, and doing more than they do already, So, uh, which is a good thing. It's a, it's a very, very busy place. Uh, people seem to have fun there and a lot of good programs. Um, we have a new uh, recreation director. Uh, he will be here on July 1 uh, for one day, and then he'll turn around and have time off and get back the following week. Um, his name is Isaac Spivey. He uh, currently or had been working in Colchester, uh, uh, Vermont, in recreation, and he is uh, currently um, was looking for a job, and this worked out pretty well. His wife works at uh, UNH. So they want to move a little bit closer to that and in somewhere in between. But we look forward to him. He's got years of experience and lots of energy. So uh, if you happen to be around on July 1st, come say hello. And he'll be here in the office uh, July 6th, uh, just trying to get caught up on things that he needs to do and get used to the office. He wants to introduce himself to the community and to the uh, business community. So we're all looking forward to him uh, being here. Um, when if you have comments or questions on if you happen to look at the selectman's agenda uh, at any meeting that we're having as long as we're doing zoom uh, if you have some questions uh, you need to uh, send them to the town clerk at, at our uh, email address which is town clerk at berwickmain.org or send it to uh, planning at berwickmain.org if you have a planning board question it's uh, they're still doing the zoom meetings um, and, and this is a way you can get answer questions, get your qu answer, qu get your questions answered. Um, fire station update uh, and police department. Um, the construction project is, is moving right along at a very fast clip. Uh, BCTV did, uh, went in last week and did a, a whole uh, filming of the inside and uh, the chairman uh, narrated it, I would imagine. Uh, but it's a, it's a beautiful building. Um, look forward to moving in. Uh, we are expecting uh, to move in September 1st that week because uh, they are all the sheetrock is up. They're in there painting on Thursday. Um, the ground, the, all the excavation work and earthwork uh, is coming along pretty well. They have a uh, Logan Street entryway is ready to go and ready to be paved. Uh, and the access road off Sullivan, uh, they're working on that the next week, and, uh, and hopefully that will be paved soon. So then it will be landscaped, um, and it's an absolutely beautiful building. If you can see it from the road, and we're really hoping once the project is all done and they get a chance to move in, that we'll have an open house so uh, the public can, can come in and see, and the uh, fire department will host that along with the Board of Selectmen. It's a very exciting to see. Um, water department, um, there's some uh, things going on there. There's a, uh, we received a $1.2 uh, million dollar, uh, federally backed loan. Uh, we're sending in all the paperwork to do that, to do upgrades to the uh, facility and improve uh, some of the things we've had problems with, with water quality. Um, we had been exploring uh, recently the connecting our water line uh, to the Summersworth 
water line uh, as a backup if we ever had any problems. Uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, chose not to do that. We're going to uh, they, uh, feel that we should find another water source uh, and not be dependent upon uh, Summersworth if we have a problem. So um, that uh, is where we are with that. Um, and things are moving right along. Um, we hope to be paving um, by the second week. Once the budget gets approved, we'll get Libby Scott scheduled, and we'll, uh, you can expect to see uh, some of the roads being torn up, uh, Cemetery Road, um, parts of um, Little River Road, and Long Swamp Road will be torn up. Um, so there's going to be quite a bit of work going on in that area. Um, so we'll see how far we can get this year. Uh, it's, it's, I feel like we're making progress, but we still have quite a bit to do. Um, just so everybody knows, the uh, walk-in uh, pharmacy is at York uh, Hospital uh, Clinic here. We found out last Monday that they were closing the pharmacy. Uh, we didn't really get any, any warning. Uh, and I actually talked to uh, somebody from the administration uh, that Tuesday morning. So some people were calling kind of surprised. They didn't know this was happening. Well, we didn't either. But it's from York Hospital's perspective, they, they're trying to cut their costs. Um, and it's not just this pharmacy that's closing, but the one in South Berwick is closing. And I think they have a clinic in uh, Sanford, and that uh, uh, is closing as well. So it's unfortunate. But we are also trying to find somebody to fill that void. Um, so we're talking in, with Great Falls uh, Construction, who are the new owners of the Prime site, and they're very excited to talk to uh, a group called Community Pharmacy, which is an independent uh, pharmaceutical group out of um, Augusta, and they have small pharmacies in different uh, small towns in Maine, Gorham, Town of Gorham has one, I'm sure nice. Town of Green has one uh, that I know of, and then um, there's others around too. So we're hoping they'll fill that void and, and they'll be a full, if they do are able to come, they'll be a full-fledged ph uh, pharmacy and uh, store like Walgreens, but just on a smaller scale. And they seem very what, interested. I talked to their owner and um, we'll see how it works out. Um, I also wanted to bring up today um, some of the bridge work, we've been talking about that. We talked about it last night um, at the Selectman's meeting. Uh, we have uh, four bridges in town that the DOT inspects. They're part of their program, but of course, we're the ones who have to fix them. Um, and m most of them are in pretty good shape, except for uh, the Diamond Hill Bridge. They call that the Prey Bridge, or Prey's Bridge. And the other is on Ridland Road. Um, the Praise Bridge, the Diamond Hill Bridge, uh, I got a call this morning from an MDOT. They had just finished their inspection, um, and he wanted to let me know that we need to drop the uh, limit, weight limit on that. Um, right now, it was weighed, uh, the weight limit was 20 tons. Uh, their inspection uh, did not do us any favors. It, they wanted us to drop it to five ton, so it means that there is more deterioration over the last year than there was uh, prior. So um, the board last night um, voted to uh, go ahead and get design work done. It's something that's been going on for the last nine to ten years, these bridges, and it re they really need to be addressed. So when I first came, I had uh, civil consultants come out and take a look and go through it with me um, and go through the uh, DOT uh, reports and give me a ballpark number of wh what it would cost. And that was five years ago, and, the, and they were looking between five and 600000 each for each bridge. There is a program, if the state has the money, that we would split the cost 50-50. So we're hoping that that will be the case. Um, I have to call their finance office at the DOT. But we are going to move forward on the design and make a, uh, to replace those bridges. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that the Diamond Hill Bridge has a five-ton limit. The signs will not aren't up yet, but they will be um, by next week. Uh, we have to order them. But uh, so drive careful. If you drive heavy trucks, you might want to stay off the bridge. Uh, that's what we have going with, with bridges. Thank you. Otherwise, um, we are getting ready for the new fiscal year, 
anxious to get people back in the door and get some of our projects started for paving and other items that we have on the list. And um, so I wish you all to uh, stay safe. Uh, don't hesitate to leave me messages. I do return my messages right away if I can get to them. Um, and any questions you have about what the Board of Selectmen is doing, just let me know and I'll make sure they get the questions to them and hopefully they get answers to you, which they usually will. So um, that's all I have for today. It's, we're still, even though we're closed, we're still very busy and we're moving right along. So uh, we hope to keep moving um, and see what Great Falls is gonna do across the street. That's what we're waiting for, anxious to see. But stay safe and uh, hope to hear from you.